Hello, good evening, and what a good Friday it is. We're coming to you live in both of your ears and completely <laughs> audible with episode three of our weekly album discussions. Uh, I'm Matt, and tonight I'm joined by Cam. Yo. And I am very pleased to say that tonight we have our Brad reveal. Brad, how you doing? Very quiet. Uh, together we are Ballpark Music, and each week we pick an album that came out on a Friday, give ourselves a week with it, come back on a stream for an in-depth discussion. No scoring, no taste making, because music is not sports. If you like what you see, give us a follow on the socials, and we'll let you know when we're going live. Uh, gents, I ticked some boxes. I turned down the music, and with any luck, we shouldn't be completely garbled right now. We're, we're, we're in danger of getting all professional up in here. That's a definite improvement on last week's stream. So, you know, we're heading in the right direction eventually. And it took us three weeks, but, you know. Deepest, deepest apologies, folks, if you did have some issues uh, with the audio last week. Um, we're still learning this streaming. Uh, we're still learning a lot of the tools at the disposal and uh i'm maybe not the most technically gifted person when it comes to some of this stuff but uh i think we've learned a few tricks and and, and we're getting in the right direction here uh speaking of technical things and getting everything in the right direction here should, should we get some brad going yeah let's get some brad how you doing man yeah good man hopefully you can hear me absolutely <laughs> no you're sounding crystal Excellent. clear you're sounding good uh brad before we get too far into it first question that we ask on this stream what are you drinking tonight what am i drinking well i have on standby some beer moretti um options limited by very local shop for very local people <laughs> it's very little choice I think that's, still, um, that's still quite up market i would say for a local shop a bit of, it's international, man. Exactly. It is international. It's imported. Well, it's probably not imported, but... <laughs> <laughs> imported from Little Italy, right? Yeah, exactly. Cam, what's, uh, what's, what's filling your cup tonight? I went for the cheapest beer that my local shop had. <laughs> um, and it's called a... Well, it wasn't the cheapest, but it's a winter ruby ale. And it sold me because it had notes of toffee. Um, it doesn't taste anything like toffee. It just tastes like ale, but no that's time. what they told me, so <laughs> what well, are you drinking? <laughs> well mixed. I'm I, I I'm going international tonight as well, actually. Um I, I, I have myself a, a Welsh beer. He Heineken, <laughs> a well known Welsh Welsh beer. Um yeah, I, 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 I just decided I wanted some Heineken, and apparently they are sponsoring Euro 2020, so they've just taken all of the teams that are in that and then put them on the front of the bottles. Um, so it kind of threw me for a loop a little bit. But also, like, one thing that I hadn't noticed about this whole pandemic thing is that even though they're doing the football this year, they're still calling it Euro 2020, and they're still calling the Olympics, like, the 2020 Olympics, but they're going to be taking place in 2021, right? It's because they had that nice logo design for the 2020 Olympics, and they don't want it. I mean, you can't miss out on something like that, man. 2020 is just such a clean number. Horrible year, clean number. <laughs> it, it goes to show marketing really does, you know, push you in the right direction, doesn't it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, does that mean there's going to be less of a gap between this one and the next one? I think so. Yeah, it's happening the year after. Woke up next year as well. Jeez. Yeah, too much. Too much. Too much soccer. So, Brad, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here. Um, yep. Back in episode one, Cam and I both gave our origin stories when it came to music, right? We talked through our first albums, our developing <laughs> tastes, projects that we've been involved in. Uh, do you think you could run the good viewers through yours? Yeah, sure. So I think my musical upbringing was very similar to Cameron's um, in that we shared shared it from the age of about 12 <laughs> onwards, I think. Um, we were involved in a lot of the same kind of projects growing up and going through school, some of which you've already spoken about. 
some of which I wish you probably hadn't spoke about. <laughs> but here we are. Um, there's also the ever-looming spectre of a video that I believe may have been previously discussed <laughs> that might come to light in the future. <laughs> it's out there, man. It's out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just glad we did that in a time before Facebook. Otherwise, it would already be. Like, it's during the MySpace era, you know, it could have been a thing. Yeah, we weren't, like... We didn't put it out there, though, so. Well, there's a reason we didn't put it out there, because even then we knew it was dumb. <laughs> even then. Even at the time, yeah. <clears throat> Apart from that, I suppose where really my kind of musical background takes a slightly different path is um, through my family and through my childhood, I've been exposed to a lot of jazz. And uh, I've been doing that kind of semi-professionally on and off for the last almost 10 years <laughs> just a slightly terrifying thought um but playing in kind of various jazz situations um on guitar um i did a degree in performance industries um which kind of covered a wide range of things from like live performance to recording um digital audio some marketing stuff thrown in as well um so got involved with lots of different musicians during that. Um, and then when that finished, I just kind of went back to jazz. That's my like home base, my comfort zone, I guess. And uh, just trying to kind of break out of that now. So you are qualified for one, right? But also I think you're probably carving out a niche right here for us as our, our jazz correspondent our, our go to <laughs> on any jazz related matters um, I want to hear important. about these jazz situations that you were in <laughs> have you never been in a jazz situation man I can't say I have like, I don't know what that means it means uh, <clears throat> outside the back of some shady club in the 1950s <laughs> You know, That's exactly jazz, what I hoped it would be. Jazz situations. <laughs> Just with a lot of smooth sax, though, you know? Like a little yeah, bit of that, exactly. Right? Oh, fantastic. No, um, so, uh, look, I we're... One thing I wanted to just wind back on, though, like, MySpace was mentioned there. And I know that MySpace went through a few ownership changes and things that did lead to a lot of like if, if you go and search out i probably shouldn't point people towards this but if you go and like search out your old myspace profile so if i were to try and look up my old myspace profile like it, it's it, it's nothing there anymore pretty much right i think you can just about find maybe like a link or something but um gracefully the social media gods have you know saved us from that spectacle but i think quite a lot of music went when they did that too so like just how much good and terrible music has been lost to the depths of the internet now that my i can give you in. one definite answer on that and that's that a black metal band that me and brad were in that still had music up on myspace that i think i listened to up to about two years ago and it's gone now. I'm very sad about that. I'm even actually more sad that the Bebo page for that band is gone because we had a high school musical banner um, along with all <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> it's worth it just to get that reaction. Yeah, we had a high school musical banner alongside our profile picture, which is us all in corpse paint. So, you know. I'm pretty sure I have the original recordings on a CD <laughs> somewhere that's like, you know, burnt to a CD. <laughs> Get that off physical media. Get it on the cloud. Exist forever. <laughs> Archiving. Uh, there's, there's no reason for that to ever see the light of day again. Historical matters, I'm sure. You know, <laughs> Somebody's going to write the coffee table book one day, and it, it needs to be in there. It needs to be part of that. Um, so now we're called Ballpark Music, so I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that last night was opening day of the uh, Major League Baseball season. Uh, Cam, Cam, did you enjoy yourself some opening day action? Uh, no, I hate baseball. Never want to talk about it again. Ah, uh, man, you don't want to talk about Travis Shaw coming back? You don't want to talk about, oh, I don't know, uh, a, a ninth inning comeback, a Josh Hader throwing hundos out here, none of that? No, no. Well, uh, it, there was a brief moment where Rizzo hit a ball, and that was nice. But otherwise, baseball sucks, and I don't want to talk hit. about it again. 
a whole hit, whole man. Hit. Got two great. last night. It was awesome. And then we lost to the Pirates. So yeah, baseball sucks. Don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> Well, you know, even if the games don't work out uh, for you, um, it's just any excuse to gobble some wieners at least, right? I'm not sure you can say that, man. No? <laughs> <laughs> Go down to the ballpark, gobble some wieners? Uh, right. I, I and think... you have very different baseball experiences. <laughs> yeah. Just going back to those jazz situations That's again. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think it's probably about time for us to get into tonight's album discussion. What do you say, guys? Yeah, uh, yep, I think so. <laughs> that seems yeah. like a good as moment as any. We've got Citizen's new album, Life in Your Glass World, up at the plate tonight. Uh, it's just showing up on screen there. So let's take a look at the press blurb. Um, I will say off the top, I have redacted this slightly because... Uh, they did very kindly have an essay put together for us. But uh, this album came out uh, last Friday. So again, we uh, sit with an album for a week, uh, came out last Friday, and then we'll come back on stream a week later and talk through it. Uh, this was out on Run for Cover Records based in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, so Citizen have always eluded definition. The Toledo, Ohio-based three-piece have been making dynamic, wide-ranging guitar music for over 10 years, challenging expectations with each new album and refusing to fit neatly in a box. On their fourth full-length album, Life in Your Glass World, Citizen have crafted their most singular work to date, completely on their own terms, proving that only the band themselves can define their identity. Since forming in 2009, Citizen comprised of vocalist Matt uh, Karikis, uh, uh, guitarist Nick Ham, and bassist Eric Ham, presumably no relation to John, have endlessly pushed themselves with each successive release, actively resisting the comfort zones that often plague bands as they grow. The band have fearlessly taken risks with their sound on each new album and shown themselves capable of exploring impassion, post-hardcore, raw noise rock, shimmering indie pop, anthemic alternative, and more often on the same album and even sometimes on the same track. But growth isn't always painless, and the band have been navigating the fraught music industry from a young age, learning as they went. When it came to time to make Life in Your Glass World, citizens need to continue moving forward creatively went hand in hand with their desire to be fully in control of their creative identity. And for citizen, that meant taking everything in-house. Uh, the vocalist built a studio in his garage, a project that was both empowering and practical the looser recording process afforded the band time to focus on each song's individual mood making their signature blend of aggression and melody all the more pronounced and capturing appealing imperfections the result is an album that represents the member's vision in its purest form something that feels distinctly citizen while also making the start marking the start of a fresh chapter uh so folks citizen have you come across them before Nope. <laughs> uh, until I realized that I had when I heard a song uh, from one of their previous albums, um, but it wasn't uh, one that I'd particularly remembered. And uh, no, same here. Need not heard of them before. <clears throat> I have a feeling my impressions of this album would be vastly different if I had listened to their back catalogue before I heard this one. But... So... I, I'm I'm not sure whether it would have changed it too much, to be honest with you. Um, I, I've caught some Citizen songs on playlists uh, before, um, but never really paid them a great deal of attention. Uh, there was a song off uh, something previous. Uh, it's called The Night I Drove Along. Um, that was a song that stood out uh, when I heard it, and it fit really well alongside tracks from The Wonder Years, Story So Far, Modern Baseball, things like that in a playlist. Um Unlike those other bands, when I heard songs like that, I never really felt a desire to seek out more Citizen. Um, but for me, that was what my impression of their sound was, um, kind of along those lines there. Uh, we'll get into it when we hit the track by track. I think this is a little bit different from that. And you, know, you can hear from the press blurb, obviously, they tried something a little bit different this time around. They've let them, you know, be themselves a bit recorded this all together in a uh, home setup uh and you know did try to push those boundaries there but 
uh, at least from my limited experience, I will say it's quite limited experience of Citizen. It, it did sound quite different to, I think, what came before. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. It, it, it felt like they had elements of this, but they went full of one element of their sound in this, which is kind of a strange thing to say because it's, it's quite genre bending in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, but you know, when I, when I first heard them and actually Janet Snake Hole played me, uh, the song you were just mentioning, the one about the car, the name, the name I've already forgotten. And when I heard it, I was like, wow, this sounds like a Take Back Sunday song. Yeah. Um, and that was my initial impression of them, is they're really heavy into the emo, and they always had these like tiny little elements of indie to go in there, and uh, from the songs I'd realized I'd heard before, but it never really made that much impression on me. Um, so, yeah, it felt like quite a transition shift for them to do this kind of thing. And, you know, I, I think just to set it up again before we get into the track by track as well, but, you know, Toledo, Ohio, uh, uh, I think that they've also been based in Michigan in their time, but, you know, all very uh, Midwest there, which you would maybe um, associate more with that kind of Midwest emo sound, which uh, comes out not so much with what we get into uh, tonight anyway but uh, yeah so uh, first track on the album we've got death dance approximately uh this was one of a couple of singles that came out i think they had kind of a quite a short window before this was released uh where they got some singles out uh but yeah hey speaking of things that i've learned from stream to stream we kick off with some of that 8d sound <laughs> yeah i i didn't really pick up that much on that because it wasn't it wasn't particularly strong um in in the beginning let I me mean, i heard it a bit but it just felt like a sort of generic ominous building sound that is so common at the beginning of a lot of albums now um it feels like the kind of go-to when you don't really know how to start your album off <laughs> just <laughs> throw that kind of thing in there um i say that as i've done that myself on an upcoming album that's about to come out that we've written <laughs> because it's really difficult to start an album um and it, yeah, it has that like really chaotic sound and then it settles down into that really heavy bass driven like dancey almost sort of proto british indie kind of sound um and i, I just i just my immediate impression is it's such an unusually british sound for an american band it's not even an american band trying to do a british sound it just sounds you know like sort of mid-2000s um indie a lot of that stuff that was coming out then my first thing um when i heard that intro and you know it does get quite bouncy and everything there you know i just thought i've i've heard this exact riff blaring from some stage or tent at reading festival circa like 2010 right yeah you've got that kind of <clears throat> the offbeat hats coming through in that like first a section as well it's kind of very i wouldn't have this wouldn't be the intro i would have thought of for an emo band um not the saying that I didn't like it. I think it grooves, it like it bounces along nicely. It's a good way to get into it. But it's definitely an indie sound. I've written down indie sound. <laughs> well, this is what I'm saying. It's got that British vibe to it. Immediately, this this sound to me was like, well, they've been listening to a lot of Royal Blood lately. Um, yeah. That really heavy bass. The guitar's not all, almost not even really present there. And it's obviously all about the bass and drums in that intro section, which is perhaps the most interesting this song ever gets but again it's not anything i haven't heard before um it's not until the vocal performance gets in and we start hearing that that it slightly alters my view of it but that was like the immediate impression that you get from it right um I, much like you guys i mean something that i put down in my notes was you know i i realized straight away that i have stumbled into an album that i wasn't expecting it was a lot more indie um you know, on this track, I could really leave the verses, um, but my lizard brain has got such an affinity for those indie pop choruses, right? Um, I'll stick on the odd song like this from time to time just to feed that craving uh, before then usually entirely forgetting that that song or that music exists for weeks and weeks. But, you know, on subsequent listens, I think you know, that chorus, it was something I couldn't help but sing along to for a while, right? Um, the vocal emphasis, like you were saying, Cam, it really gives it that punch. Um, I've got this aching 
is taking over. Um, it, it, it's, it's a nice little chorus. Yeah, you've got those like ends of the vocal phrases coming on the down beats like really strongly on like three and four. Um, it does give it that punch. You know, it, it reminded me a lot of a band from Exeter that I was into for a very brief period at uni called Rat Attack. Um, they had a lot more pop punk sort of elements uh, to their music. They only released like six songs, then put up a post, uh, post about how their vocalist quit on them and never came back. But it, they were all about like that, you know, dancey, good times, vibes, um, great fun. Um, and you know, you get elements of that on this song. I thought it also had like, in terms of the bass sound to it, there, there was a, there was a very muse esque bass sound, I think on this track. It's something I didn't pick up on until I think maybe track seven or eight when there, there was a, there's a chorus or something later on where I'm like, Oh, that's muse. And then on subsequent listens, I was like, okay, that, that really, really definitely has been influenced by muse. Um, but the, the the immediate thing I got from from most of this track and on many many other tracks since um, or later in the album was yeah like you say in the catchy anthemic chorus but just how much um, this sounds like a like a block party record that's come fifteen to fifteen years too late um, like a huge fan of Silent Alarm um, love block party saw them actually at Riot Fest in Chicago and it was a blast it was the best set of the weekend for me um, but this just feels like feels like they've taken sections of other people's sounds and just put them into songs rather than you know you know how you, you get influenced by something you might want to twist a sound or you might want to you know take a riff here or there and like you know mess it up a bit and try and like make it something you know this just it sounds to me like directly like they've taken sections from you know his banner like we'll take a section from that and i think that was that was really obvious on this first track um straight away and that was like kind of a promise of what was to come next yeah, you know, I, I I think there was enough sort of original here for this. It, it was a lot of elements sewn together. It, it still felt like it was this band's song um, to an extent. So I might push. Yeah, I, I I think we're saying the same thing though. Um, just before we move on to track two here, uh, shout out Dreadlocks Triple Seven. Thanks for the follow and thanks for joining us in chat. Uh, right, track two. So I want to kill you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, between the, like, quite regimented snare hits, the bass picking up a little bit, and the vocal tone at the start of the song, I did think we were about to break out into a You Me at Six song for a second, for a hot second. The, the first thing I wrote is it's just more moves from the block party play look. It really is. It's, it's more from that kind of sound. It really does feel like the silent alarm was in heavy rotation when this album was being written and i'm not saying that's a bad thing like i said i love block party i love that album to death but it it just feels like a point so it's a little too close to that for me um and it, it's all very catchy but it's all very surface level and it never really feels like i'm gonna get any deeper um with this song anyway in the first two songs so i wasn't immediately drawn in um by this overall sound i think it has got stuff going for it though i think I kind of noticed at the beginning of this one, like sound elements, the snare sounds really good throughout the whole thing. I think throughout the whole record, this is why I picked up on it. And um, something else they do quite frequently throughout this is, um, I think it's in the A section, they have kind of a six bar pattern that repeats rather than like an eight bar, um, something that they obviously like because they repeat it a few times throughout. Um, <clears throat> But otherwise, it's kind of does feel a bit like more of the same as the first one. You've still got that kind of offbeat hats, um, bouncy sounds good. Feels like, like you're kind of getting into the meat of the album, um, but nothing earth shattering coming up just yet. Yeah, you know, it, it's definitely the case. I mean, for me, I, I'd heard this song a few times uh, after they released this as a single as well. Um, it made a way. It made its way onto a few of my playlists uh, briefly. It did start to get a little bit repetitive for me, just in, in terms of the song itself. Um, there are other bands out there, like uh, I think Teenage Wrist. Um, her 
releasing things at the same time that can slot into this very broad type of genre that were just a little more interesting and engaging. Um, like a super strong base of a song here, I think, but it just it needed a little something more, just another little push uh, in the direction um, to to get it over the line. For I me. saw what I was saying at the so I saw what I was saying at the start. It just all feels very surface level. Mm. Like, don't get me wrong, it's it's really catchy, and I do feel like I like it, but I don't ever feel like I'm gonna love it. You know, it just feels like oh, this is a nice thing to listen to, and then what's next? Yeah, it never it never really went that far for me. Um, you know, it's it's just, there's nice interludes, there's nice clean picked guitar, there's another anthemic chorus, um, and I, I really think without the vocals, the vocalist, sorry, and how good he is, um, start to really kind of get into the voice on this album, uh, sorry, this song. Um, I feel like this would just completely fall away into kind of indie landfill territory, um, and, and that's the element that really stood out. Other than, as Brad said, the drums actually sound incredible on this album. Uh, the snare is huge, but I, I really noticed the toms. Maybe not on this track so much, but the toms just sound so clean. Um, there's just so much to them. I think the toms in this come in, like the second A section, um, you kind of get those tom rolls coming through. But out of the first one, kind of just helps to add some interest, but they do like really stick out with something that sounds really good i think guitar parts throughout this as well are good i don't think i don't think it's quite fair to say it would all fall away without the vocalist i think i mean listen to some of the guitar parts there's one coming up that you know i really really enjoyed um there are there's some great guitar work in here and great guitar tone as well throughout i don't i don't mean so much sorry in the sense of there isn't great guitar work or great guitar tone or anything like that but i just don't feel like there's ever anything particularly memorable to do with any of the guitar work the bass probably yes because there's some really heavy pound and driving bass um but but the guitar for me just it could have been something else and i don't think i'd have necessarily noticed that much um on a surface listen you know and when you want your album to stand out in that way I, i'm just looking for a little bit more than just an accompanying instrument um, because it, it does just sort of enter that, that territory for me. Well, what about you, Matt? Like, I don't know, everyone's probably aware that me and Cameron are both guitarists. So from a vocalist point of view, I mean. Well, um, thank you both first off for answering a question that I'd written down for later, which was exactly about that drum sound. Um, you know, you are both much more uh, audiophiles than I am and able to get into the nub of that. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I'm going to say I I think get, the guitars, etc. you know, they sounded fine. Um, I, I start to get lost in how repetitive it gets uh, later on. And, you know, it's something that Cam said, I think, earlier on, um, on, you know, both of these tracks is that for me, it's a lot of the vocals and the vocal performance that is taking me through a lot of these songs when otherwise I might have just kind of slipped out a little bit. Um, bass was something that I noticed from time to time, uh, more so, I think, when... Um, uh there's there's quite a few places where that ends up getting soloed or really has the spotlight put on it a little bit and it sounded nice then but uh for me honestly i think on the majority of this album it's the vocals that are uh taking me through as a vocalist so there you go i'm always going to back them so we move on to blue sunday yet yeah, uh next uh what are we thinking about this track I don't think it changed up the formula in any way so far. Um, it, it was more kind of, you know, jangly indie guitars, driving bass. Probably some more prominent synth coming through at this point mm -hmm. that we haven't had before. This is where you start to hear some of the electro influences that we talked about at the start, some of that genre bending. Um, but at this point, it's just a very light touch in the song. Uh, it's another strong sing-along chorus. You know, I can imagine being drunk in a club and absolutely belting this out 15 years ago. Um, and like you said on the previous track, it's another track where the vocalist is really carrying the, the whole thing for me. Um, you know, it sounds good. It sounds really good. And what you said at the start, that it was a home recording or home recording, but you know what I mean? They recorded it at home, um, probably in less than, well, I don't know if it was less than optimal conditions, but it doesn't sound like it at any point. It sounds really good. 
but uh again it's just not got that point of interest for me other than the vocals again my two recording buffs here um with that section uh that comes towards i think it's about midway through but that that unplugged guitar sort of into there how easy is it to record something like that and make it well, slot in as nicely as it did i've written down um guitarist in the bathroom <laughs> So it kind of sounds to me like, you know, the guitarist, you're at a, record, you're at a gig, you're at a recording session, the guitarist just won't stop playing. And you're like, okay, if you're not going to stop playing, just go and do it somewhere else. <laughs> and he's kind of wandered off to the bathroom <laughs> and there's a mic somewhere in the studio picking it up. Um, it's obviously done Brad's for effect. Talking from experience, obviously. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, it's, <laughs> ob it's obviously done for effect, but it sounds just like an unplugged kind of electric guitar that's been mic'd up. Um, and then obviously when the rest of the rest of the band comes back in you've got then like a, a more kind of a clean tone coming through um so there's an interesting texture to add in there it's not something i've ever tried to do or probably would have ever thought to try and do to i think if i was going to do that i'd either just you know record a clean guitar di it or something or try and record an acoustic guitar um to to, to mic up a an unplugged <laughs> <laughs> electric guitar is, is not something I've come across before. I don't know if you'd ever come across it before now. <clears throat> I don't think it needs to be analyzed that much, really. I think it's just, <laughs> I think it's something that was done. I mean, it sounds perfect. It sounds good. And it's like, it does catch your ear. We're, talk we're talking about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> we're I, talking I, about I, it. It's like a focal point I, to talk I, about. I thought it was good. You know, I, I, I enjoyed that little aspect there. It was very clean. And, like you say, it felt like it mixed in nicely. Um, you know, Cam, you were talking about the genre blending, and this was, I think, the point where I started to write down a lot of those um, thoughts there. I mean, you know, you do get the hints of those kind of Midwest emo roots that we were talking about. It's, it, it's there. It's subtle. Um, but, you know, heaps and heaps of that 2010s um, and earlier British rock, um, you touched on it earlier. You know, I, I, I think rather than uh, Citizen pulling from the bands that I'm about to talk about, I think uh, they are all kind of pulling from the same source. Um, but, you know, there's a bit of You, Me, at Six, who I mentioned on the last song. There's the odd song that I could mistake for some Mallory Knox um, and a lot of Lonely the Brave as well um, in there. So, you know, again, those are all bands that I spent a lot of time when I was at uni listening to. Um, and, you know, I, I, I can find pieces of affinity uh, in here, um, I think. So there was something else I noticed as well. This is kind of, uh, you know, a bit more of an emo touch point within this song felt more back to what i would expect from a citizen record still heavily indie still you know all those elements but it, it kind of had that oh, okay this is this is actually a citizen record at this point because it, it has that touch point has that touchstone um but again yeah it's it's like you said it's just more sort of indie uh, more heading in that direction i think this is where some of the kind of new wave the experimental mm. synth stuff comes through a bit more on this track um, it's probably the more overt example of the album of where it is. And I think it's done really well. I, I love synths. <laughs> I love that sound. I, you know, it's just, it sounds good. I, I also have a block cap synth um, next yeah. to this track in my notes. So I'm with you on that. Um, so looking ahead, track four, we got Thin Air up. Um, we were talking about, uh, you know, the pieces that are taking you through. I mean, for me, there's a lot put on the vocals to pull this song along. Um, and they do a fine job here. You know, there's, there's nothing particularly under or overwhelming, but I was wondering whether that was intentional, right? You know, a lot of the lyrics, um, I think throughout this album, but particularly on this song, they're dealing with helplessness, repetition, general malaise. So you've got, you know, dig my wishing well, I throw a nickel down into it again, takes me back uh, to when I first looked down and saw myself. Um, and if they're going for that mood with this song, I think they hit it and it delivers that emotion in quite an understated manner. But if they're not going for that, I'm not sure how much there is to this song for me. 
you talked a lot last week when we were listening to the Lana Del Rey record about how you, if you had this album on in the background, you don't think you'd have turned it off. And that's kind of how I felt about this song. Um, I get that that's probably the intention and that that was what kind of I felt at the time too. But at the same time, you have to write an interesting song, you know? And I always felt with this song that there was a better song hiding within it. Um, it, it just felt like that they decided on this formula by this point and they were just sticking to it quite rigidly. Um, and I, I just never... I, this was one of the ones where I think I'd definitely skip over on repeated listens of this album um, post this week. It, it, it just felt wrong in that place and that placement in the album for me after the dancey kind of fun tracks we'd had before can i pull you up on something that you said there sorry to cut across you mm. brad um but uh you you do you have to write an interesting song um i don't think the intention should ever be to write an uninteresting song you know um i, I don't know sorry maybe interesting isn't the right word and i don't want to say it's a bad song so i don't no, think it's no, a no, bad song no. but it's just not one that it, you know, if I'm if I'm gonna go for a slower sort of, it's not this one was slower or anything like that. But if I'm gonna go for like a kind of malaise sort of song or a hopelessness feel song, I just there's still got to be moments of interest in there for me. There's still got to be points that really stand out to me. And it's just like you said, another song where the the vocalist is just carrying everything for me. I couldn't really pick out anything else of interest. And it kind of ties into what I was going to say, which was like, I think this is after the third track this is then kind of like feels like it's going back to back to their sound i think i feel like the third track was quite different mm -hmm. um and then this kind of brings you back into like okay now this is the album you were listening to before that song um it's back to that kind of the indie rock the indie rock sound in a strong way um and throughout again there's some nice guitar tones in there some really cool interleaving guitar parts going on throughout it um but nothing to really grab you i wouldn't say on its own right if you were listening to it in context of the album i think it's a bit better place than if you were just listening to it as a single if that makes sense because it kind of ha i feel like it does have its place in the album um just juxtaposed to the third track really yeah for sure for sure I, I... It's where I ultimately fall down, right? You know, if you're you're thinking about a narrative as a whole, um, you know, maybe maybe this song does serve that. Um, but uh, yeah, um, not I think a great deal grabbing me here. Um, how about call your bluff though? Uh, we're we're starting off with some darker vibes here right at the very start of uh, this song. Uh, did it pull you in a little bit more? My overwhelming feeling so far at this point in the album was that for an album that is as musically homogenous as this in places where it's got such strong, uh, this is in indie for definite, or, you know, even when they blend in other genres, it's still kind of, you know, it's all working together. It just has to rely on more than the vocal by this point in the album. And it's another track, and I'm going to keep repeating myself throughout, where it, it, the vocalist is great. He's done a stellar performance, and the melodies are interesting. They're great but there's just not a lot else behind it again um at this point in the album anyway i will say that because i do have slightly different feelings on some next tracks coming up but at this point it's just like it feels like it could have been so much better because they have such a good vocalist to work with um and you know he provides so much of that that core but it just it just needed more again for me i i really like my guy's voice right um did you ever get the same feeling that I did where you, I just keep wanting him, wanting him to let rip a little bit, right? Um, you know, it, on, you know, if, if, if we're following through with what my thoughts about uh, the last song were, right, you know, we built up a lot of emotional tension on thin air um, and then go in that heavily introspective direction again lyrically um i know you're keeping a lot of secrets what i see in you i see in myself uh what's that you're thinking now but the next lines after that are just paying uh praying for a payoff that never seems to sort of hit those heights um and i i i really had to keep 
thinking at this point is is this restrained aspect that we're getting um both musically and vocally a a very deliberate choice um that they've made or you know is it just a symptom of something else i think for the majority of it the vocals do feel pretty controlled um there's not a kind of moment where you go like wow he's like stepping out of the box there there are a few there are a few times i think it's probably on some tracks before where it feels like he's starting to or he's about to kind of break into something else and just never quite comes i don't know if i don't know if you notice the same thing 100 percent, 100 percent. um in it becomes twice as apparent i would say i think towards the end of the album where you get a lot of those moments where you think something's building and then uh, no it doesn't go there okay we're gonna get this we're gonna get uh, we don't so much um uh i i absolutely agree there i think it has to be at this point a choice because if if you've wrote, written the build-up to make it that kind of take it to that next step, I don't think for a band this experience and a band this clearly musically talented, it's not a difficult thing to do to elevate it to that level, to really go for that next step, you know, let rip, let everything open up. Um, Marge it, as we say. Yeah. Marge it up a little <laughs> just, bit. Just Marge it, homie. But, uh, you know, <laughs> so I got slightly off piece there. But yeah, I, I don't think, you know, for a band like this, it, it, it would be a difficult thing to do you know um maybe for some other bands it might be but for a band that has experience in exactly that kind of build-up and you hear that on their previous work i think it has to be a choice at this point and for me i'm just not sure if it paid off i think we've just lost brad there haven't we we've got him back <laughs> he's back already <laughs> but yeah i think it just it just never quite pays off and in a way um it, it just falls flat it just leaves you falling flat way too often um and, and maybe that's what they wanted but it doesn't really please the listener or it didn't please me anyway to this point so maybe pedestal uh track six um comes along at the right moment uh to some extent there right you know we we start building up with some noise at the start of this track and you know we are definitely getting a fuller and fuzzier sound um there is an element of that strain in the vocals, uh, too. Uh, sorry, I'm throwing some words Oops. around that I didn't expect to see there. But uh, yeah, there, there's definitely um, some uh, strain in the voice to go along with the lyrics. Uh, you know, you get it here nice and growly. Well, there's something inside of me. It's eating my brain. I'll take some medicine for it and I'll be okay that's all rush that last line and um the tempo a little bit to fit it in to help that emphasis there this the intro to this track genuinely had me really excited yeah. um it is like it's like a shot in the arm after the last five sort of the five tracks at this point we've been served up where it's like i said a very homogenous to that point this almost felt like an industrial track to me that intro um you know that really grinding distorted bass that comes in at the start there uh i was getting you know kind of light nine inch nails vibes even from that it was it was really not what i was expecting and i was really excited by that intro um there's some more energy back in the vocals after the last couple of tracks as well there's you know a really interesting melody going on with it as well and and the guitars actually for the first time feel like they have a purpose for me rather than just filling space or just filling some sound. They actually feel here like, okay, you know, we've got a reason to be here now. It's not just kind of intricate, fiddly nothingness that I've heard so many times in this album. And just overall, this feels like a much more interesting and unique track than you've been offered at any point. Yeah, I think this is my favorite track of the album. Um referring back to notes noise exclamation mark exclamation mark smiley face <laughs> you know it's um yeah it's like a glorious noise and then that guitar part is my my favorite guitar part of this this album as well um <clears throat> you've got that kind of repeating bass riff that's going on and then you've got some like different inversions guitar chords moving underneath it, it creates like loads of nice movement it's a really memorable part of the track um You've got some lead bits coming on later through the song that kind of mimic what's been happening in the vocal. 
Um, it just feels really coherent. Everything has a purpose, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I think standout. here as well to go with that guitar part having that kind of more standout thing you start to hear some real desperation and anger in the vocals for the first time at this point Definitely. and it just kind of really stands out compared to like the melancholy kind of offering that we've had before and and you said muse earlier this is where i really started to get muse vibes this is where it twigged for me like oh hold on there's there's a real muse influence to this it just it feels very old school and again i loved the outro to this song i thought it was really really good if they'd written the whole album to be like this or sorry not that because you know you don't want 11 songs sound exactly the same if they'd gone down this kind of path through more of the album i think it would feel a lot stronger overall for me and a lot more interesting it's really interesting and I, so i don't know whether this is as a result of my short attention span or i don't know if this is a result of the last few songs being quite repetitive um but i think it's a song that still does demand a little bit of attention to get some of that payoff there um casual listens for me this uh song would still fade into the background a little bit um and again i don't know if that's just because um uh i, I don't know if it, that says more about me than it says about this song um but yeah focus listens really do show that there is a lot going on lyrically and melodically um and you do subtly i think pay off some of the emotion from the last couple of songs here yeah definitely i i think what you're saying there like the first time i listened because by this point on my first listen by i, I was half tuning out of the album so it didn't stand out so much it was only on repeated listens that i really tuned into this song because because of the previous five songs i was kind of like okay well it's just going to be this for 11 songs and i'll give it a proper deep listen later on but this is just my first surface listen so this just kind of fell in the background for that but like i said on repeated listens it really is a standout real highlight from the album i think that guitar part after the intro just grabbed me straight away um Again, probably a lot to do with taste. I just love the way it works with the bass line. I think you know, those two parts together just sound really good. Um, I think I've kind of enjoyed this album the further I got through it, <laughs> rather than like maybe listening to the first few tracks and then tuning out. I think as I go through, it's grabbed my attention more and more. So um, if we were begging for something a little bit different uh, before this song, you know, you do get two in a row as soon as you move on to Fight Beat, right? You know, this is this is certainly a departure from the rest of the album. Now, you're going to love what I've written in my notes here. Um, uh, the intro and groove to this would not be out of place on a Jamie Lennon record. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, that is exactly how I felt about this. And it was, it was again, another point. Like, well, hold on. This band had this in them all along. This is really interesting. This is, you're quite out there. You get this mad electronic breakdown in the middle, but still very dancey. Uh, still, you know... You would you don't hear it and think oh okay wow they're doing some sort of crystal castles or sonic youth weird kind of sound all the sound thing they're doing like something very dancey and very kind of pop and this album really quickly transitions from being a by the numbers indie album to like quite dark almost quite pop industrial mm. um almost out of nowhere um and you're kind of thinking, why has this taken six or seven songs to get here? Um, I don't know, because obviously I, I was looking at the lyrics while I was sort of uh, going through it, and I don't know if it's trying to sort of, each song is supposed to, you know, uh, go through and sort of take through a different mood that you might be in or something, and that's why it's tracked the way it is. You know, you're, you're taken through a cycle or something like that. Um, but it, it was a really odd turn. I really didn't see it coming, but... Um, yeah, I've just really enjoyed the, the two tracks that go kind of this and uh, the last one. I think you get a hint of this track in track three, like a hint of, you know, this, this is not all this album is. And I think, yeah, it's like straight from the bat, you've got that like super quantized hi hat sound, and you're like, okay, this is different. <laughs> so, what's going to happen here? And then that bass line, that kind of weird bass line, lots of chromaticisms going on. Um, really groovy though like the bass is so groovy um, you can't like not kind of get into it that bass line I think um, it's definitely a very pleasant surprise at this point 
Um, so this was actually the track where I had written down in my notes about uh, drums, right? To ask you that question, obviously the drums um, or you know the simple the symbols uh, in particular that you're picking up here aren't representative of what you catch on the rest of the album. Um, and Cam, actually, I mean, you know, you said uh, you said wouldn't be out of place on a Jamie Lemon record. I mean, I'll 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 go adjacent with this. I wrote down Arcane Roots, um, I think next to this, which is you know a band that's um, uh, lightly associated with uh, Mr. Lemon. Um, you know, the sudden stop that happens in a couple pa places on this uh, track that threw me for a loop every single time that it happened. I, I was always looking and going, like, oh, is it finished? No, all right, we're still gone. No, I, I can't say I had that experience. I always kind of expected it to come back in. Um, but I don't know if that's because I was just looking at the track time. <laughs> I saw that there was more <laughs> track to go. Um, because, you know, you tend to tend to do that from time to time, don't you? So that's I don't know cheating, I, dude. I'm sorry. Was I supposed to listen to it without looking yeah. with my eyes closed? <laughs> uh, we, we say the rules every week. We have one week with an album that came out, and we have to listen to it blindfolded obviously no i was just gonna say like with what brad was saying about you know we get a hint of this on track three it's so much of a subtle hint that at the point you're listening to track three i don't think you ever expect this turn um you, you can see oh okay they're gonna sprinkle in some synths and some electronica and stuff like that and it's all very dancey and and all very nice at that point still um but you, you never see this real <laughs> shift that comes along very like quite suddenly for me um, along with yeah, like you said, that really ripping groove um, that really stood out in a big, big way. I, yeah, I think even with like, you've always got the more electronic drum sounds coming in. I still don't feel like it feels massively out of place in the context of the whole album. Probably where things have been kind of hinting at it previously, it doesn't feel like. Oh, now I'm listening to a different album, or like my shuffle has gone wrong and <laughs> taken me to something else. Like, it's very clearly still them. Um, his departure, obviously, from, like, the indie rock kind of sound, but it's still got those, like, kind of new wave elements in. Um, but it's coherent enough that it makes sense still, and it's just a nice kind of departure before where are we going next yeah that's that's definitely the thing i'll say it never feels incoherent it definitely feels like it belongs on the album but it's still just not the turn i expected even yeah. even with all those hints before it's just still quite a big surprise and it, it sounds completely right when you hear it and it's coherent um and it, it sounds like very in, in place with the album um very nicely but it is still quite like a oh Okay, that's the way they chose to go instead of like one of the other ways that they could have chose to go at this point, um, which is where I think the surprise for me came in. So, Brad, you alluded to it a little bit there. Um, as you move into Black and Red, the next song on the album, I think you really do uh, recognize the true effect and what, what Fight Beat does so effectively on this album. And it, it acts as quite a nice palate cleanser because, you know, we are back... Uh, on black and red to you know uh, a, a lot of the same things that we have had before yeah i think it's very deliberate on this track though it's obviously back to that more mainstream sound but kind of as you go through on a on a deep listen um you've got the vocal lines in the a section they're kind of quoting back to i think it's the first song um, if you listen to the vocal lines in the A section of this song and then jump back to the first song, which I did a couple of times, and just listen to the chorus, you've got like lots of similarity going in there. It's a quote, it's deliberate, it's kind of a variation on that. Um, so I think it is taking you back to that sound, but it's done in a very deliberate way and it's quite interesting that it reminds you of itself. <laughs> I I was so distracted by the fact that this is almost a one for one of a block party song um, from Silent Alarm that I almost missed all of that. I mean, it is, you know, it, I was like for a second because I obviously don't have Spotify, so I listen to a lot of stuff on like YouTube or wherever. Um, obviously, or by obviously. by the album, yeah, because 
we don't like Spotify on this on this stream. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so I was like, for a second, I was like, oh, hold on, has Silent Alarm started playing, whereas that Block Party track started playing? Because it, it really, really sounds like the, the exact same riff and the exact same style and the exact same kind of, it, it, it sounds like it was off that record, which was, it, which really threw me for quite a while. And I kind, of, I kind of felt like I really would have liked this track a lot if Block Party hadn't written it 15 years earlier. Um, so I just felt like after the inventiveness of the last two tracks, I was a little d- disappointed. But maybe if I had not been thrown by that and noticed what you noticed, Brad, that it's obviously a callback to earlier parts of the album, I might have enjoyed it a bit more. It was just really thrown. I, I totally missed that as well. Um, and look, this is, this is what happens. This is why we had to get a professional in right you know because uh obviously cam you and i we we, we miss yeah I mean, it's obvious of uh, which one's the professional musician <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, either that or the, the blindfold thing meant i was listening to a different album <laughs> you know it's, it's possible um uh, you know you you mentioned deliberate as well um i i i think i could i i felt it was deliberate as well but maybe just in um a, a slightly different way you know this isn't a bad song i think it's just fine if you told me a band at this level had sat down and like okay we need to write a song black and red is exactly what i'd expect to come out the other end right you know if if you just decided to sit down and write a song um there wasn't anything really grabbing me in um uh but it, it still sounded fine I think you could listen to this song and get a pretty good idea of what the bulk of this album is about. Mm. It's very much their sound and very much kind of bringing you back to their sound again after the previous track. That's, I think probably what they kind of tried to do with, um, I think it was the fourth track after the third one threw you for a bit of a walk down a different path. And then again, you've got here, you've got track seven, it's a bit of an oddball and then okay, now to bring you back to our world kind of thing, the planet that this album is on. I wanted so much for it to go down that path some more, though, at this point. I really wasn't ready to return to what we'd had before. And I will say, this is the point in the album where I've gone from just liking the vocals to absolutely loving the vocals. I really, really like this vocalist at this point. I think he sounds particularly great on this song. Um, the bass breakdown is really nice as well. I'm just absolute sucker for any overdriven down bass kind of, you know, that that section where it just stands out on its own. It's really drivey and grindy. That sounds really nice, and it's all really catchy and great and fine. But it's just fine, and I really, really wanted to go back down that path that they'd been through on the last two songs. I think that would have been a much more interesting route for me to go down. Um, but I get what you're saying, that they wanted to return back. You're like, here, have your little bit of weirdness in the middle of the album. We're going to go back to what we're doing now. But for me, I just wanted more of what we just had. So we're uh, we're getting quite deep into life in your glass world here. Um, and that, that's a reminded for us by the fact that track nine here is called Glass World. Um start of this song, I mean, an acoustic guitar gets cracked out prominently for, I, I think it's the first time, right? Yeah, uh, first time hearing acoustic guitar that's not an electric guitar mic'd up, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> um, <clears throat> just like purely, probably from a taste perspective, it does sound a little bit boxy to me, the acoustic on this. Um, if there's anything in this album that sounds like it was recorded at home, it is that acoustic guitar. Um, I've been very lucky to hear and experience some incredibly talented audio engineers like miking up acoustic guitars though so i don't know if anyone else picked up on that um, see i with the acoustic guitar thing i thought because it was following the rhythm of the drums so much and you've also almost got the melody coming from the bass i i kind of felt like that was a deliberate you know make it a little bit boxy so it, it, it acts as a rhythmic thing because the acoustic strumming almost you know mimics what the drum's doing in the section for me it's true. Um, They're super locked in, aren't they? The guitar yeah. and the, the snare. Yeah, and and I just felt like because you you know you make it a little bit boxy, you make it not you know those those highs don't sound out so much, those lows don't sound out so much, that it just really locks in quite tightly with that, and then that allows the bass to take up the rest of that space with that melody. 
Um, maybe we're getting a little bit too <laughs> far into like how the mixing goes on this album, but I, th- I felt like that that was a really clear and obvious like um, maybe not so clear and obvious, sorry, but it was like a really deliberate use of that kind of which is bizarre because you're always as, when you like mixing, you're like, oh no, that sounds boxy. I want to get rid of all that boxiness, and you know, you want everything to sound. But I, I felt like it really might be a, a deliberate choice at this point. I guess it kind of almost the way it ends up sounding. It's like it's the same instrument, like the rhythm is so locked in. And then I guess if the sound is kind of sort of, if it's mirroring sonically as well, then kind of just makes them sound like the same instrument. The snare and the guitar are working together. So yeah, yeah it makes sense. It's, it's a flip of the script, isn't it? Because you've got the bass providing the melody rather than the acoustic guitar, um, which was is what you usually expect you know you'd expect some nice melody from an acoustic guitar or from a vocal or whatever but you've got it coming from the bass here um which is you know just it, i thought i thought this was one of the more musically interesting moments of the album to really flip that um and, and again on top of that you've got incredible vocal performance um really strong so i i feel like this was just one of the actual real interesting points of the album for me compositionally yeah i, I i'm I gotta say, I'm I'm glad that I've got you guys here to dissect some of this stuff because really, I I didn't have a whole lot of feelings about this song overall, right? You know, it, there's um, the vocals are certainly there as they've been there throughout the album, but to me, I got a touch of you know something different in the beginning of the song. Not a whole lot else. We're nine tracks in. We've had a you know a stretch of songs where we had something a little bit different a little bit interesting going on something that was a little more formulaic here and i i was starting to drop out a little bit i think when we got to glass world see i felt quite differently about this track because i feel like this is one of the first times i remember i touched about it with the acoustic guitar intro but you start to get some um real interesting mixing choices and i think they're kind of mirrored by the song title and the the um and the lyrical choice and janet snakehole pointed this out to me because we were actually listening to this together at the time but this is kind of you know real heavy reverb reverb on the instruments and this kind of effective vocal at the end and you know she kind of felt like it might be pushing out sort of this glass kind of imagery within the mixing and i just thought there's really interesting mixing choices in this song and kind of thing and knowing that the band you know had such a heavy um I actually said maybe they probably didn't think about that at the time and it was a producer choice. But now knowing that the band uh, had such a hand in in doing all of this, it, it feels like really that they were pushing for that kind of thing. And, you know, maybe a lot of people wouldn't hear that when they're listening to a song like that. But, you know, m- me and Brad are nerds for this kind of stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> we're always listening out for that kind of thing um, all I, I... the time. And I think just going back to the glass imagery, I, I, I apologize if I, I skimmed over this when I was going through the uh, blurb, just trying to uh, make sure I got through that expediently. But, you know, Toledo is the glass city, right? Um, this was all recorded in Toledo, uh, or uh, it's at least where the guys are from. And, you know, so again, you got your glass city, you got your glass world here. Um, I could tell that the story that they're trying to tell here um, on this song, uh, what I think was happening here was, you know, there, there was a lot of payoff. Um, this was something that did feel very personal um, in that way. Um, I think because I've maybe missed some of these elements as we've been going through lyrically and, you know, what's going on sort of overarchingly, what the uh, story they're trying to tell here um, uh, beyond you know some of the the the, the malaise um, and uh, discomfort and things like that that are that are definitely touched on throughout here. Um, I I I maybe didn't get that payoff on this track, but you can see which direction, or at least I I think I can see which direction they were trying to go here. Yeah, and I think a lot of these things are so subtle. Like for example, if you know, I'm glad you're here because. I doubt me and Brad would have ever known that there was a city in Ohio that was known as the Glass City and would never have ever picked up on that thing. And there's like some subtle lyrical themes, there's some subtle mixing techniques which now feel very deliberate and there's things like that which really make you feel that this album is trying to be a much more narrative album than it comes across because it feels so dancey at the start, it feels so experimental in the middle and then it, you know, kind of tails off again towards this point. 
Um, but it's also subtle that I, I think it would take a lot more listens of someone not overly familiar with this band to really pick up on a lot of that stuff. If life in your glass world makes you feel so alone, uh, so alone, then why don't you say so, right? You know, I, I, there's there's definitely something you know very personal and, and they are trying to build up some heartbreak etc around this um and you know i think there's times lyrically on this album where they do that quite well um it was one of the strengths of one of the previous tracks uh too but uh yeah i i, I didn't feel so much of it on glass world myself uh so uh then we get winter buds coming in um, and you know, when this song starts up, I, I definitely went, yeah, a ballad -y track probably does make, uh, some sense here. Um, Brad, you were talking about sort of some subtle hints that were thrown in. I, I think that the, uh, the acoustic guitar part early on, uh, does very quietly suggest something that's going to happen later on in this song. Um, yeah, this is a pretty song, isn't it? Um, right up until the point when it's not <laughs> and um that's the highlight for me that kind of bridge you've got that like bridge out of nowhere with the slide guitar and <laughs> like yeah. it's just like where did that come from <laughs> like and as quickly as it kind of appeared it disappears and just leaves you back in this like yeah. you're just quite kind of questioning like yeah did, that did I just happen? hear that? Yeah. Did, did, that, did that just happen? But I mean, God, it sounds good, and it's a definite highlight of the track. And you know, first two so minutes or so are you know just relatively standard fare. You know, you're verging on the pedestrian at times, and then yeah, out of out of nowhere, it all amps up. You get a solo, and kudos, it's unexpected. But then we're back to fairly standard fare. Um, so interesting i had the complete opposite feeling to this track really? as you do. That's... i've written down that this is the rawest and most emotionally resonant song on the album for me you can hear some real cracks in the vocal early on um and i've written down here that the, the lyrics come in tell me if i'm strong enough as the vocal gets stronger and it feels like a real deliberate push like i'm really kind of fragile at the beginning i'm getting stronger now it, and it's a really nice way to paint that song and it's just something that really stood out to me i loved the vocal performance early in this song again an absolute highlight on this album for me i took nothing else away from citizen and listening to them for this last week is just how good this vocalist is for me um which is unusual because i'm not really into this kind of stuff normally you do like um, a bit of word painting though don't you I love it. I love it so much. But the the instrumentation the instrumentation so it's giving so much space to the vocal and it, it just really stands out. Um I thought it was a slightly strange choice to put two slow songs together, but um I I just think we really transition nicely here and I really enjoyed this. Until we get to this <laughs> odd and out of <laughs> out of place sounding solo. And I was just like why why did that happen what was the point of that it was nice for a second but it doesn't do anything for the song it just felt like they had this section of song so we're just going to put this here and then we'll go back to what we'd heard before and it just felt very pointless to me i don't i don't know it sounded nice but like it, it just felt like what was the point of that like it didn't happen for a reason and obviously not everything has to happen in music for a reason but it just felt pointless. And I was really enjoying the track up until that point. And I would have loved it if it transitioned to that and gone into it longer, kind of like the way that uh, a Soma builds up, you know, the Smashing Pumpkins song from my mention this album every week beside me stream <laughs> or a mayonnaise or something like that off that album was the kind of vibes I was getting. Not sonically, but like that kind of build up into that. And I was like, cool, we're going to get this ripping solo. going to get this like real nice slide guitar, as Brad mentioned. But it just lasts for what, like, five seconds and then you back out of it i think it might have been a bit longer but you know is why <laughs> it was my overwhelming feeling why did that not go somewhere i think it may be a symptom of kind of being like track 10 of the album and the second to last song and maybe that's why me and matt didn't pick up so much on the things that you did i mean you get to that point in an album sometimes and you feel like 
do you know any albums where the tenth track is the song the strongest song or maybe we didn't give it as much attention as it probably deserved um isn't Letterbomb it, track 10 on American Idiot? Uh, that was <laughs> where I was going to go, yeah. Uh, that, it, it might be a... Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but maybe it was the album already. I thought of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any more examples? Uh, I'm sure the track 10 <laughs> from Simon's Dream is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. Every track from that album's great. Well, there you go. Just pick an album where every, you know, all filler, no killer. Wait, no, all killer, no killer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, remember what track oh, yeah. 10 on all killer, no filler was? Um, <laughs> Fat lip? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it was either that or in too deep, yeah. I'm surprised I knew that it was a Sum 41 album. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you know, um, if if you're asking why that moment exists and, and Brad, you, you, you touch on it um, there as well for me, you know, I, I, I think for me that, uh, that, that moment exists to perfectly sum up what my overall feelings on this album are. Right. You know, it, it's, it's again, one of these moments that builds up and I'm like, great, we're going to get something going on here. Just something a little bit different. And then just as I'm starting to get back into it, it peters back off and it just leaves me kind of on the edge of my seat again, just teasing me a tad, just like, this is the promise. This is what could be here. And it's totally coming later, but you never get that moment, I think. It doesn't even really peter off. It just disappears. Like as suddenly as it yeah. comes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, yeah, it does grab you. And um I feel like it possibly leaves you expecting a bit more from the next track than you get. Um, yeah. So I, you know, moving on to Edge of the World. Um, okay, we had a we had an opening that fooled me into thinking we were going to get Yumi at six for a second. We've got the opening guitar and bass on this track, the last track on the record that makes me think that they're going to break out into Blink One Eighty Two for a second. This is the most disappointing song on this album for me by a long way because it builds so nicely and you're kind of just expecting this big epic anthemic sing-along and you know all the way throughout it's emotionally resonant you can feel that building throughout it's got you know i've, I've got to stand at all i've got so much to offer it's it's real it's raw and it's personal throughout and then it just ends without going anywhere at all and so flatly that i didn't even realize that it happened um and that's it. And and maybe that was deliberate. Maybe that was a deliberate choice to the narrative. I mean, you know, life goes on. It's just, you know, it doesn't always have to be this big build-up, big epic ending where after all this build-up. But at the end of the day, that's cool as a musical choice, but it really doesn't sound good as a listener <laughs> from my perspective anyway. I think last track on the album, you're expecting, like, a kind of return to form or, like, a big finish, a big anthemic chorus, a big sing-along stuff. Um, as a song, like it's got, like the drumming on this song is great. It's super tight. Um, I love a bit of kind of '80s sound synth you got like popping through in a couple mm -hmm. of places in this. Um, like you, like you were saying with the builds, like the pre-chorus bits are really nice, and they are like really kind of pushing you. Um, I think there is more like deliberately done on this track. You've got like some words where you've got a delay. <laughs> On like the last word of a sentence, the delay goes, and that then like carries out, <laughs> carries on for like the whole of the next line. Um, obviously, like really emphasizing like some of the lyrical stuff that's going on. I don't know if you've got anything written down for the lyrics at the end, particularly, Matt. No, no, um, I I didn't pull anything in particular. There, you know, it's it's um, a lot of the same thoughts that you've outlined there. You know, there's those moments where it really feels like it's building to something but it never manifests um and the ending i think of this album you know like the last notes right it's a relatively unassuming riff that just very sharply and very suddenly stops um and you know i've written down not necessarily your classic closer here um uh really it, it it's um you know for me again you know summing up 
my uh my overall frustrations with this album a little bit here um and uh, it, it's it, it, it's it's whether it's that narrative choice that we were talking about earlier right and, and whether they are trying to tell a story with this and you know be very on the nose with this but as you say i think you know as a listener sitting down not the most pleasing way of uh closing out this album i think it must be a choice because like the the lyrics that stood out to me were that the repetition of i like i said earlier, i've got to stand up to it i've got so much to offer and it, it just feels like you know this is the resolution to the to the story you know i i've i've come out of this dark period that was happening before um and you know I've got I'm going forward and everything's going to be fine and I feel like that that choice to end the album in that way goes along with that theme but uh, you know as you just said and I said earlier you, you can't do that to your listeners and expect them to enjoy that as it, it just, just that for me music doesn't work that way. I, you know if you're making a piece of art cool it's an interesting thing to do but as someone you know listening to an album for the first time I think it's a odd choice <laughs> Um, at best to do that um, I think maybe if you want to do this kind of thing do it earlier in the album but not on your closer not when you built up like that throughout the album and you've always teased this huge huge thing coming um, to never have that really leaves you falling flat towards the end here but even in just this song there's like quite a lot of teasing of like a big a big thing you've got like drums building drums for like they're building up constantly like the end is feels like quite a lonely end like the finish to me so i think it must be deliberate i just feel that like from an absolute like selfish satisfaction maybe like some massive riff before it would have uh, you know been the payoff that i needed exactly if it, if it had gone to some huge anthemic thing just before that and then dropped back out on it i might have been a little bit more satisfied but to never ever reach that point um you know just just never felt like resolve <laughs> and it really frustrates me you know i i'm i'm I, I i've got this vision in my head right of uh the uh three gents from citizens sitting down and, and catching the tail end of this uh discussion right here and hearing us talk about this and going like yes no you got it but you didn't get it the way that we uh, that, that that we wanted you to get it here. So uh, look, I, I think it's probably a good chance for us to uh, transition on just to our sum up here. And uh, what did you guys think overall uh, to Life in the Glass World? Cam, why don't I uh, kick off with you here? Yeah, start with me. That seems easier. So I've really mixed feelings about this album. I really do. Um, it's catchy it's emotionally resonant throughout it builds well throughout it bends genre in places it keeps you interested in places but just throughout all of that and uh, sorry just as well to highlight again how incredible the vocal performance is throughout um and shout out to the vocalist whose name i don't actually know but the incredible melody writer incredible vocalist really loved the performance but despite all of that it just falls flat and leaves me feeling disappointed overall i think partly because of that ending partly because of the first half of the album i just i just felt like there was there was better songs within there was better ways to end songs there were better ways to resolve things and I overall just felt a little bit disappointed by what it could have been uh quite clearly just you know something about vocalists called matt right he, he, he is also a matt um I, I feel like I've been quite critical um, throughout our discussion tonight. Um, uh, it's it's not because I think that this is a bad album. Um, there's so many elements here that I think I mentioned it off the top. I should like, um, and uh, there are a lot of things there that I do. But it just builds to being, uh, you know, just something that is wildly frustrating um i think for me it's missing something and i'm not 100 percent sure that i know what that is um but you know it's summed up for me on the fact that there are so many of those uh pedestrian moments um and there's that promise of building up and then life in your glass world just never really gets going um Thank you very much. Uh, this is Water for, yeah, again, 
pointing out that the vocalist's name is Matt. Uh, he does have a solo project uh, as well. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I'll be checking that out. <laughs> Definitely. Um, you know, there's there's early promise here on this album, uh, but it, it, it feels like that's the peak. And we pull the yoke back a couple of times after that, but so much remains unfulfilled. I feel, I feel like this is a really interesting album and i feel like having a week to listen to it and fully digesting it we may be doing it a bit of a disservice i feel like maybe some more time to kind of get to grips with the narrative and you know really like deep dive on the lyrics maybe some more of the elements and it would make sense i think there's a lot going on there's like clearly a hell of a lot of talent if you'd said you know this is I assume this is their first album that they've recorded at home. At home. Suggestion home once they setting. built Yeah, suggestion was they built the studio for this album. The sound on this album is great, like throughout bass is great throughout, drums sound phenomenal throughout. Every song has something about it that you can say. There's no song I don't think that's like a complete throwaway. Um I feel like, yeah, just maybe I'm missing some of the narrative that would explain why we get like lots of builds and lots of things that leave us kind of feeling unfulfilled. Um, and like I said, maybe just having a week to listen to it is doing it a little bit of a disservice. I feel like you're a hundred percent right with everything you just said, to be honest, Brad, but, but my, my counter to that is in 2021, how many people give your album more than a week? Um, and you, you're playing a big risk by, relying so heavily on that we listened to lana del rey last week but it was immediately obvious what that album was about it was so clear and not as subtle as this the subtlety in this sure might lead to like a classic album down the line but you're playing such a risk by not having any of those elements that make it more satisfying and don't leave you falling flat after a week listen yeah, i feel anyway and like you said really obviously quite talented musicians really quite obviously talented recording engineers um if this was done at home um great mixing choices in some places really interesting songwriting there's just always something feels like it's been held back and um maybe if i gave it more time i would probably have left feeling a little less disappointed but you know can you give an album more time in this this day and age um which is a sad thing to say but it's the reality of of, of the situation and you know, I the other thing that I tried to think about um, uh, after after a couple of my you know last listens before we hopped on the stream was you know whether this is an album that I might have actually enjoyed um, a little more at another time in my life, right? So I'm thinking about um, I'm, I mentioned some Mallory Knox and Lonely the Brave off the top, which uh, were a couple of bands that I listened to you know relatively intently for a little while um, uh, before dropping off of and uh, i think what separates them from this and is is the lack of that anthemic moment um those were two bands that my first uh my first exposure to them was in a live setting um one at a festival one at a gig um and you know what it's like you know you catch a band like this supporting an artist that you want to see you not along to the majority of the set um but then they close out with something that's really strong and you're like, yeah, cool. I'll go and grab that CD. I'll listen to these. Um, that song might be in Citizen's catalog, but it's not on this album. Um, Death Dance approximately and I Want to Kill You might be that, but they're long forgotten um, at the end of what is, a, you know, in the grand scheme of things as well, quite a short album. Um I I I I would just feel like I want to see something. Yeah, that press blurb closed with you know this is the album where they state their identity. Um, and you know, I think I would listen to another Citizen album after this to see how that develops. Um, for the exact reasons you pointed out, incredibly talented. I can't say that life in your glass world would end up in my rotation though. Um, no, I see this is, this is, this is a really difficult one for me because I don't think it would end up in my regular rotation, but I, I 
do feel, and I say the same thing every week, time and a place. I do feel like there might be a time and a place for this kind of album. I just don't know if this is that album. Do, do you know what I mean by that? Like, th there's always a time and a place for this style of album. But I just don't think this hits the mark on on it, it being that. I might return to it at one point. I'd probably definitely check them out live, um, just because I feel like in mm. a lot of places it'd be quite dancey, it'd be quite fun. Um, and, you know, obviously they'll play previous songs that are a bit more emo and a bit more anthemic. Um, I can't see this one making it into a regular rotation for me. Brad, your regular rotation is a little bit emptier than ours, I think. We, we, we've already chucked a slope record in there, and I think Cam yeah. Lano Del Rey won in there. Would you be uh, adding life in your glass world to it? Track six will go into my regular rotation, I think. I've already gone on about that first guitar riff enough. So that people probably tell that I love it. Um, but for the rest of the album, it does kind of feel like, in a way, kind of waiting for a sequel. So would definitely check out what they do next. Wholeheartedly agree. Wholeheartedly agree. So I, I think we can probably draw a line underneath that there uh, at this point. And uh, what we can do at this point is start looking ahead to next week. And Cam, I think we've actually done a little bit of work ahead of going live this time around, right? <laughs> yeah, I looked at what's coming out today. Hey. Um... And it wasn't a whole lot. <laughs> it wasn't that much. Uh, what was that? What, what were we thinking? There was a Godspeed You Black Emperor record that came out today. I feel like that would be a really difficult album to discuss for an hour and a half. Um, just because, you know, don't get me wrong, amazing band do amazing things. But I just get the feeling that's going to be a hard one to discuss. So I was thinking uh, Dry Cleaning, I think it was called, which is an excellent band name. It's so stupid. I love it. I'm definitely up for a little bit of dry cleaning. I, I had to listen to a couple of tracks there, and um, it, it's. It, I think it's certainly something that we're going to be able to talk about for sure. So, so yeah, a lot more so than Godspeed You Black Emperor. But you don't get my Barcelona losing my mind watching them live story, which is a shame. <laughs> but another day, maybe. Well, we'll we'll save it for when we're talking about Thurston Moore or something, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right, gents. I mean, unless you've got anything more, I, I, I think we're just about at wrapping up time here. Um, so, uh, folks, thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, if you've missed any of the discussions or you want to hear it again, we'll have a recorded version of this going up on our YouTube channel on Sunday. Uh, if you are watching that recorded version, then we'll be going live next Friday at 8 p.m. GMT for another album review. Uh, I've got to give a shout out once again to Millie Draws a lot on Instagram. That's spelt with a Y for all of our wonderful graphics. If you want more Citizen, you can head over to uh, their website. Uh, that is citizenmi.com, I believe. Uh, and if you want more Ballpark Music, then check out our link tree. That's slash Ballpark Music UK, where you can find all of our socials. Brad. It has been great to have you aboard. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I did. I definitely did. Uh, more than I thought, I think, actually. <laughs> That's a good That's review. A... <laughs> we'll take that. Yeah. Uh, it's also scary, is it? You, you kind of forget that you're live after a while. <laughs> yeah. Wait, we've been live? Just... I hope so. Oh. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go through all this for nothing. Did you press record? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah, if you're if you're watching this on the YouTube version, uh, I have pressed record. Uh, Spoiler alert. <laughs> Cam, thank you so much once again. No problem. I'm I, here every week. I've had a lot of fun, uh, and with that, folks, we will see you all next time. Stay safe. Wait.